I'm the Roguescaper here with yet another painting tutorial. Today we will be painting Gurioni, the Grey Demon. This figure hails from Aquila's Alliance, one of the rarest and most overpriced expansion sets you can get. However, the cost of this figure doesn't equate to its stats, as they are mediocre at best. But where this figure lacks in competitive presence and depth perception, it certainly makes up for just the cool fact. It's got a stout, slouching body, a glaring eye, and a very uniquely desaturated color palette. Furthermore, this figure is a great way to practice color matching, detail work, and brush control. All important steps on your painting journey. Well, this thing is hard as a bit, but man, is it giving me a headache. Let's paint. Here we go. So when you're working with 3D prints, I always recommend the first step is to take your figure under water, wash and scrub it to make sure there's no leftover residue. And then after all that has dried, I would recommend priming the figure with a method called Zenithal Priming. I have talked about Zenithal Priming in several of my other videos, but here's a quick reminder. First you want to cover the entire figure in black primer. I'm using an airbrush for this, but you can use a rattle can if you don't have access to an airbrush. Once the black primer has been applied, you want to go directly over top of the figure and use a lighter color like white or light gray. Doing this will really showcase the highlights and the shadows of your figure. Gurioni has lots of details, so this is a great step as the two-tone gradient will really showcase the different structures and textures of the figure. When you paint Gurioni, I would recommend using a medium to large size brush, at least for the base coat, as there are large areas of flat surface area, and using a smaller brush will really slow down the process and make it look a lot more streaky and not as refined. I am using a Monument Pro Synthetic, a size 4, but really you can use any, for the base coat, any workhorse brush that you have that's about the same size. So now that we're ready to get some paint actually applied to Gurioni, let's work on the base coat. Gurioni isn't called the Grey Demon for nothing, as most of its colors are vastly desaturated and don't have their full vibrancy. The best way to desaturate a color is to either mix it with gray, black, or white, or use its inverse color on the color wheel. To keep it simple, let's just mix gray in with all of these other colors we're using. Apply it to your wet palette off to the side, make sure it doesn't mix with the other, other paints, and get some water on your brush. Now mixing and thinning paints is kind of a bit of an art process itself, but once you figure it out, you really will enjoy an expanded range of paints to use. So you're gonna just take your brush, and I like to go kind of in a circular motion, like so. This is kind of an older brush I have that you know, has seen some better days. And really just mix the colors in and then make sure you rinse that brush out. So once you have that color kind of to a point you'd like, definitely remember your ratios. For this, it's kind of a one to one ratio. And you can certainly write those down if you plan on painting the figure in the future or just kind of do some guesswork. Once you have kind of the paint on your brush, I like to make sure it's, it's thin, which you might just need a bit of water to apply to it. And then different paints need different amount of water to thin it. You don't want it too, too wet or it will become kind of unusable like that. Paint should have consistency like so where it holds together. But you don't want to just dip it in typically like that as it'll come on too thick. Your paint should be somewhat translucent and have a bit of the underlayer show through. Starting off, we're going to take this dark gray, unmixed, and put it onto the Tetsubo. Get in all the corners and going all the way around. Make sure you fill it in completely. When I work on a big model like Gurioni, I try to find the areas that 
won't get messed up or painted over and focus on those first. I recommend choosing the cape as there's not a lot of overlap uh, with the other parts of the body and the You want to use long flowing strokes and kind of follow the flow of the cape. Apply a dark red and make sure your paints are thinned down as you want to kind of avoid streakiness and blotchiness on the cape. Make sure you get the parts on the shoulders and kind of the front as well. And don't forget to paint the area kind of behind the legs and the body. For the hair, you want to mix blue and gray together and apply that thinly on top of the head. The purple took me a long time to color match, but the colors listed here are kind of the best, best match I found for it. It's a very unique purple and isn't one you typically would find straight out of the bottle. A mixed gray and of a neutral purple with a little bit of pink put in just to kind of get the nice color that you're looking for. Again, follow the kind of flow of the fabric, this time going side to side and kind of cover the whole legs. For the body, mix blue, green, and gray together. Be making sure you get the toes and the hands and uh, that you have very good coverage on the figure. When you paint the face, make sure you avoid painting the eye as much as possible, as we want the eye to be kind of a nice, consistent, and lighter color. If you do accidentally paint over it, no worries. Just thin down some light gray paint and paint over the eye, covering up any mistakes. Now that we have the uh, base layer mostly done, let's go through and touch up the little details to really make this figure pop even more. I'm going to go through this real fast, but for the most part, you want to take your time and be careful not to go into the larger areas of the paint you've already applied. You don't need to thin down your paints too much, and you're still looking for a consistent coverage akin to that of the base coat that we've just applied. Uh, for instance, you want to use metallics on the blades and little bumps of the belt. Paint the shaft brown of the weapons. Uh, pick out the little details in the buckles and use a light gray for the horns, teeth, and braids on the hair. And with this, we've applied the foundation for Gurrioni. You're gonna to wanna to go through and fix any mistakes where the brush went too wide or crossed over into other colors. You'll definitely want to add a couple coats, especially to the skin, hair, and cape to make sure no lighter colors show through and it's a nice, solid color. It wouldn't be a hero skate figure without a copious amount of wash, so let's work on that next. When you apply a wash, you want to thin it out of the bottle and have it flow into the cracks and crevices of the figure. Wash acts as a shader for your paint job. It flows and fills in the cracks and crevices of your work, upping the contrast and really uh, bringing the details you may have overlooked that much more to life. You'll want the figure to dry for a good amount of time, about 30 minutes to an hour, standing straight up. And with that, Curioni's done. Oh yes, one last detail, the eye. The eye, although appearing to be initially intimidating, isn't that hard to paint. Actually, it's just three circles stacked up on top of each other. I definitely recommend that you transition to a more of a detail brush 
as you'll want more precise control when painting the eye. Be sure not to over moisten your brush or thin your paints down too much. You want nice and solid coverage. Thus, I recommend that you trace the outline of the figure in white and fill it in first. Use the edge of your brush and first trace a half circle right in the center of the eye. Fill that circle in with white and let it dry completely. Now grab a nice bright yellow and apply that over in the entire area where the white paint has been applied. Again, trace the outline and fill it in, essentially repeating the same step, just with a different color. After the yellow paint dries, what you're gonna do is get black and draw a circle, a full circle, right in the center of the eye. Lastly, you just wanna add a small white circle in the right corner of the black part of the eye. Again, repeating the same steps as we've said before, just trace the outline and fill it in. This doesn't need to be exact or precise, as you'll be seeing it from far away, but make sure that there's nice and solid coverage and that your paints don't flow or blend too much. And with that, your Gurioni is finished. While not the most competitive figure, it is just an awesome looking piece to have on the battlefield. And probably a great piece not to pay full price for. It takes a bit of work, but you can definitely say that Gurioni definitely catches the eye. Thank you so much for making it to the end. If you have any questions uh, about this process, be sure to leave a comment. Or if you have a particular character you'd like to see me paint, be sure to let me know. Also, if you're not already, if you could subscribe, it would be most appreciated. I have plans to make a lot of new content and your support really encourages me to keep on going. Well, thanks for listening to my spiel. I am the Roguescaper, once again, encouraging you to think differently. Take care.